Hey there. Today I'd like to share with you a uh, texture generator tool I made that's integrated directly with Unity that allows you to use Stable Diffusion, uh, the free version I might add, to be able to generate textures uh, for use in materials directly within Unity itself. So as you can see, just a quick demonstration of how this works. I've got a uh, my texture generator tool, which is accessible via this tools menu up here. And if I select the floor, for instance, or let, yeah, let's say the floor, I'm gonna tell it I want a cobblestone texture to generate. And it will automatically generate a, that uh, texture for me. Let's say I go over this, this right here, this cube. I tell it I want a brick wall, let's say a mossy brick wall, just so we can distinguish here. And give it a couple seconds. And boom, we get ourselves a somewhat mossy brick wall. Let's say I don't like that one now. Give it a couple seconds. for it it's still still a work in progress maybe yeah there we go and then let's go over here and let's say I want this one to be let's just say this one's going to be green grass no moss just a green or what what else can we do oh a blue blue neon sign color I hit generate doesn't come out great every time blue neon so I'll just take away the sign because sometimes you can see it's trying to integrate pieces of a sign with it go it's not really blue but as you can see it might take a take a little coaxing because this is still using a prompt um, you know what let's go back over to this one let's just put the brick on this one brick wall no let's make this one a mossy sphere a mossy rock There we go. And as you can see, the, the rock texture itself generated down below. And let's say this one is a modern high rise building. It should come up any second now with a facade. And not happy with that one. Try something else. Still doesn't look too good. Modern high rise. Still looks like crap. Let's try another one. This is stable diffusion for it. It's not always perfect. That looks better, right? So. With that said, it's that easy to come up with this. So what I want to do now is show you how it's done. Um, I've got uh, three files that, uh, that are actually used to do this. Um, one goes in the editor section. Right here, you have to create assets, editor, and drop this texture generator .cs. Now I'll have this all on the links down below. Boop, boop, boop. There we go. I'll have that all in the links down below um, under uh, on uh, GitHub, and from there I'll actually um, have all three of these files and a little description on how to actually go through the setup and everything for this, and I'll also have a um, post for this YouTube video itself as well. But using that file, that then calls out to something called Texture Diffusion, and Texture Diffusion is a Python environment, and as you can see, it opens up a console window. So just to demonstrate how this is happening, 
I go up here to Tools, Texture Generator, and at that point, that Python window opens up. And it sets up a local listener to listen for a connection. At that point, it, it waits for that connection. And now I can start going ahead and generating my textures where this window is going to be up in the background while the AI stuff is going and everything. You close it when this window is gone. I thought about uh, having it disappear completely, but for right now, I'm just going to go ahead and keep it up. And once that's up, at this point, you can actually see how it functions where I'll do, let's make, make this... Um, uh, it's cobblestone or it's flag, flagstone right now so yeah actually I'll do more flagstone but we'll make this one a, a red flagstone so I'm gonna hit generate on this so if you take a look at this window it gets the connection you can see that it's processing so it is doing something behind the scenes I usually keep one window off to the side I've got two windows on this monitor and as you can see it didn't do a great job with that one so I hit generate again it gets the connection and wait for it yeah I get that problem I've, I've still got some issues I'm working through so it takes a little bit of time for it to actually update and everything but anyways I, as you can see you know there's a and I'll go through and over time get to little issues like that worked out where it's not synchronizing immediately and that kind of stuff where you have to hit the generate button a couple times and everything for the most part it's working pretty well you know well enough to actually be usable but this is a work in progress so going back to this here's the uh, texture generator file there's three four lines that are actually going to be important here one is going to be the root directory to you got to modify this to actually put this as the location that you're going to put the two Python files. Now, one thing is you have to have Python installed for this. So it's 3.10.6, whatever it is. I actually outlined this on the web on the uh, uh, GitHub, and it's uh, I'm referencing Stable Diffusion Automatic 1111. And once you've installed that, you should have everything that you need to get this going. And then once that's installed, at that point, um, you turn around and you throw these two Python files in there in this, uh, this directory. So I have my D developer Unity text material, but that's just where I'm developing it. So you might want to put that in an easier to, to place location for yourself. Um, that's the only place that, uh, that you really need to make any modifications. Um, the handler is the PB handler, that Python, that's the one that actually listens for the connections. And if you want to, um, you can change the locations that the generated materials and textures are put in into the Unity project. Now this automatically populates PBR generated in a materials assets folder and a textures assets folder, it creates a PBR generated as well. So if, if neither of those asset folders are there, it will create it automatically and as many levels deep as you want to for the hierarchy and everything. And as you can see, it actually places these materials here for each one. Now, one thing I've done, just because I like the look of it a little bit better, is um, the height map, um, the occlusion, the detail mask, and albedo are all actually filled in with the same texture. So this allows you to you know, get a little bit more vividness from the imagery and everything for each one. So you can actually remove the detail mask if you like. Um, the occlusion and just have it simply be you know the albedo but as you can see you know there's not the color isn't as good um, so that's just something I'm doing by default but you can change that as well um, if you're a coder it's not that hard to do you can actually change that got a little section down here right here that uh, allows you to to change um, what it's actually assigned to so you can remove detail mask um, the uh, parallax, the occlusion, and the uh, the main texture, which is the albedo, and I'll put that albedo. Um, and then from there uh, to all these other things, probably nothing else that you really need to mess with. But the big thing here is just to remember that the location for the the Python files 
these two files here, PB Handler and PBR Material. These are the generators and also the listener that actually is connected to by Unity. Um, go in one directory. And the asset files that are generated and pulled into Unity are placed into the materials path and the textures path. So just make sure these are filled in. I'd suggest leaving alone because this is all I've tested on. Um, it, but if you want to make modifications and everything, knock yourself out. I may or may not make changes if you complain about it. So PBR handler is, this is the thing that actually does the listening. So this sets up a server that uh, listens for connections and preloads the texture diffusion model. Now texture diffusion is something that's freely available um, on Hugging Face and it's a wonderful model that actually does use texture generations it's derived from stable diffusion 1.5 if i'm not mistaken so i'm using that to do the generation for this and uh at that point um it's all this does is it just waits for a connection and from the unity so you could have multiple unity projects up if you want to and have this queued to essential server if you want to, you know, so it actually it has a local host port. You can set this up to be any IP that you want to. So it can be you can actually put this on a powerful server and have multiple people serving this up at the same time if you want to. That's if you want to. And the same thing holds true back with the uh, the project um, for the if I go back to the, or the there it is C sharp. Um, this if you look at. We've got port 10,000, and what I'm doing is, I, I should probably stuff this up above, but um, I'll, I'll worry about that later. But uh, this is where it's actually going to connect to on port 10,000. So this sets it up for 10,000. So like I said, if you want to have this on 10 different computers, you know, um, just make sure that, uh, that you actually have, you know, have this fix this and also fix the other thing over the other other directory as well so with that said there's not a whole lot that needs to be done this just loads up this dream textures texture diffusion model and I'll put the link to that down below as well um, so you can see it for yourself and see what I'm pulling from and at that point uh, once it sets that up and loads that model it makes it so where it responds much faster than if I was doing you know a load on every time so the other aspect of this is the PBR mat.py. Now this can actually be run as a standalone application and uh, you can actually generate um, any number of different materials using the same parameters. So what's nice about this is you can say PBR mat and then give it the prompt. It basically takes three, per, three parameter, parameters going into it. Uh, I've got the, the usage that'll be spit out if uh, you screw that up at the command line too. So here's the usage for it, boom. Number of generations, so you can actually say, hey, I want 20 different generations of this texture. You know, completely randomize the, uh, the generation number. So no, I don't have a way of actually preserving that number with it. Maybe something that could be built in later, but um, what this does is it, uh, it, it allows me to call from PBR handler this function, or this file right here. And at this point, I've, I'm building in a negative prompt into it to, to try to actually clean up the quality of it while simultaneously putting, adding some things to basically make it so where you can make sure it's tileable and seamless and a texture. And since I'm more interested in photorealism, um, this right here, you know, allows me to make sure that we've got 8K HDR and, and photorealistic to keep, keep those prompts really small, like brick wall, and it comes up with a realistic brick wall. So if you're doing animation or something else that's uh, going to not need photorealism, this is where you're going to go in and have to modify this. And all this does is basically uh, go through, I keep saying basically a lot, i got to stop that. Uh, I'm using Euler Ancestral to do this. I found uh, some of the best results with this for the scheduler. And then I just, uh, at this point, turn around and do a pipe and retrieve the images and spit those out. So it spits it out locally. All images are saved to this directory so you can review them later if you want to. So if you've gone through 50, 100 different generations in the Unity project, um, but you're using the same exact, you know, texture name and everything, it will overwrite that, that texture name. 
So you gotta you gotta make sure that uh, that you're you're using different things to generate the texture and everything, uh, different qualifiers, different uh, different you know text keywords and that kind of stuff. Because if you don't, it will override previous ones. However, um, in the uh, in this directory here, the Python directory, this is where it's going to be generating those files. It will retain all of them. So, anyways, that's just a uh, a little heads up there. This is that's about all I've got with this. So these three files, these two files here, PBR handler, PBR material, go in this directory here throw this file here, the entirety text generator.cs into the editor section to repeat. And once it's there, at that point, you'll see this menu item, texture generator, will then become available. And at that point, all you have to do is select the game object of choice, type in the prompt, hit generate, wait for this window, you know to go through and make sure it's all done and boom you should be set so if you've got any questions um they're all you know all my information's uh, up on the uh, github i'll create a little community or whatever form up there and everything but um yeah let me know how it, how it works out for you and also in the comments too so if you've got any issues or something like that please feel free to make a comment on my youtube channel which i'm pretty quick about responding to Okay, thank you for trying it out. Good luck. Let me know how it works out. Later.